All right, everybody. Welcome back to my shop. I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going I'm to show you a different way to do the crackle really quick because I wasn't really happy with the way the other one turned out. I think my shop was just too, too warm. So I am going to, let's see here. I, use, I put a different kind of crackle stuff on it. I prepared it early. It is this stuff here you get at the craft craft stores, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. It's called four cart crackle medium. What you do is you put the base coat on, let it dry for an hour. And then you shake this stuff up really, really well because it'll settle in the bottom. And then you let that dry for an hour. But it's been drying for about an hour and 15 minutes. And it's supposed to crackle as this paint dries. So I'm going to apply the crackle or the, the white again. But I'm going to use a sponge this time to apply it. I'm not going to use a brush because I really didn't like those brush strokes. So I got, I'm using a sponge. It's slightly damp. I'm just going to put a little bit on the sponge. And I'm going to dab it on this paper towel to get a good part of it off so it's not all bloppy on the, on the piece. So I'm just going to, this will give it a more textured type of look when it cracks, I believe. And this should be a, a fun experiment as we go along. So once I get this. Almost looks like snowflakes. Yeah, it does. A frost. It gives it a, it, it gives it a really cool texture. It's like and I can already see it clown. start. Yeah, it's already starting to cr see some crackle right there already. So as the paint dries, it's supposed to show up, and hopefully with the with the the heat in my shop, it's a it's currently a hundred degrees in my shop right now. So I'm kind of biting the bullet here as far as weather goes, but I'm doing all right. I got my swamp cooler going, so that's blowing pretty much directly on me so that's helping and it's also going to help with this paint to dry a little maybe a little slower than I wanted to because the humidity the swamp cooler is putting out and that's what I really want and you can also see I, I masked off that walnut that was that's the rim when I painted the blue on there I didn't want any of that blue to get on there and then I'd have to recut and resand all that walnut. So once I get this done, I'm going to set it aside and then we'll make the knob that's going to go on top of the lid. And I've got some uh, the same kind of walnut that I used for the rim. Now this can get a little tedious to watch, but it's kind of, you know, you can thinner in some spots and thicker in others and we'll see how this works out. I can see cracks already starting to form in it which is what I'm shooting for so I'm just going to put just a little bit more on just go around a little bit faster I'm getting a little bit of sponge stuck in there that would hey, just add to the hey, texture yeah hey, hey Scott um, yeah does does the cracking happen on a pattern like i saw one time where somebody was using a brush and they brushed it on and it cracked was the cracks were happening sort of on the brush strokes is this, it can, this stuff that, that's what happened last week when i used the glue okay it kind of it followed the brush strokes and it gave it a more of a too much of a uniform pattern for my liking gotcha so that's yes, thank what, you that's why that's why I cut, I basically, I cut all this off. You see it cracking right here already. Yep. So by the time I get, oh, it's cracking everywhere. This is what I was after. Cool. This is much better than yesterday's or last week's. And the cracks are much smaller and closer together, which is what I was shooting for. So I'm going to take this off the lathe here. I'm going to set it aside, let it dry. And we'll come back to it when it's fully dried and see how the cracking happened. If I'm not real happy, they say you could actually add a little more paint on top of that and it'll still keep cracking. So I'm just going to move this out Scott, of the way. Please, please note the use of gloves. Um, yes. 
And number two, he protected his lake bed. Yes, I uh, cover. I always cover it up when I'm ever doing anything liquid, or or anything like that. Even if I'm uh, burning lines into the wood with wires, I always cover the lathe bed because you, you don't want any any embers falling down into the shavings. But you definitely don't want paint to, and finish. I always put a, a, a cover my lathe bed when I finish it and all that stuff. So. Okay. And whoever had that smart remark about Billy Burt, leave it alone. Leave it alone, folks. All right. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to set it to the side. Yeah, it's cracking great. This is what I was hoping for last week, but it didn't quite hit the mark. So I thought I'd give it a try again. But a different product this year, this time. And that's all acrylic. There's no chalk paint like I used last week last time that's just acrylic paint this this acrylic paint you buy at the craft store i'm taking this out this is a piece of ebony it's too dark for the lid so i got i want the, the grains to match up so i might have to put my other chuck in yeah that's not gonna work i hoping it's gonna be small enough let me grab my other chuck Get this one out of the way. And I'm going to pull this one on and I'll just unscrew. This is going to be the lid right here. But I want to make the top first so I can make sure everything lines up when I make the lid. So it's, I always find it best. Can you, to... switch the, can you switch the camera, Scott? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Thank so you. I'm just. Come on, man. It does not want to. Where are you? This piece is. I probably put it on there a little tight. There it goes. So, this is going to be the lid. I'll screw that back on in a second. And you can see I'm using a spacer so I don't have to go as deep when I drill a hole in that lid part. Because it is a, it's going to be a shallow type of piece, and I don't want to end up going through the bottom here. Provides more support too. <laughs> don't need to make a donut, right? That's right. All right. So this is the same kind of black walnut as the rim, and that way, when I put a finish on it, I'll oil the rim with walnut oil, and I'll do the same thing for this. There we go. We are all set. And so you guys can hear me all right and everything. There's no sound problems. I'm all right. I'm great. Wind that back up. No, oh, that's not in there very good. It's kind of awkward. So I'm going to try to straighten it up just a little bit. So, so running a little bit truer. Yeah, that's better. I'm just going to round off the whole thing with a small roughing gouge here. I just got a one inch roughing gouge. Oh, very important thing before I start turning, take your gloves off. Do not forget to take your latex gloves off. I have forgotten to do that on one piece and it was a natural edge i was coloring it i applied the color it looked great and now it's going to go and inside it's going to sand the inside because it's like an open goblet i forgot to take the latex glove off well it grabbed and it pulled my hand right across that surface and i still have scars from it all across here yeah so I learned my lesson about taking off gloves before, you know, latex gloves, they're going to grab like crazy. All right, so I'm just going to turn this around real quick. Camera change, sir, please. Oh, there we go. I'm looking right at the, my monitor, and I still don't get that right sometimes. 
Let me see if I can do a different look here. Oh, that looks good. There we go. Get All down right, in the corner. All right, you just take it easy. Oh, no. No, this is fine. I believe it's I got it round now I still need to take it down a bit more because I don't need a <clears throat> a knob that's this this big so I'm gonna do some peel cuts real quick I'm gonna grab me my larger roughing gouge for that the small one doesn't work as well for that peeling cuts so I, I can come in here and just kind of bring this in and do some peel cuts to get it to the radius I want Adjust my tool rest. Shake that stuff off so you guys can see it a little better. Now I'm just using this side, the side cut right here, the the tool. If you look down in the bottom corner, I'm just using it right on this edge right there. It's a pretty much flat. So it makes it a lot easier to do a peel cut, almost like a skew chisel. You can move a lot, take a lot of wood away really quick with doing this. Just a little bit more. Almost there as far as the radius I want goes. There we go. That's good. All right, put my tool away so they're not laying around so much. And I need to grab my parting tool just to just to true up the front end here. That is squealing because it's overhanging so far, so I'm getting a little bit of vibration with it. That's the woods saying, hey, you're, I'm overhanging saying here. Ouch. Little, yeah, I'm saying, ouch, ouch, ouch. All right, so I'm just going to start shaping it. So it's going to be kind of like a, a soft V towards the middle, and then it's going to have like a cove, and then it's just going to come back out to where it's going to rest on, on top of the lid here, so. It's basically a cove to start. I'm just going to go back and forth here. Yeah, zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. It's a little bit better. Oh, wrong way. A little too much. There we go. I'm going to stop right here because I want to hollow out the center part. It's kind of give it the knob a kind of a unique look. It's still a little too big for me what I want, so I'm just going to take it down just a little bit more. And I'm going to grab that blank to just kind of hold it up there and give me an idea of the knob size. All right, just a little bit more. I'm just eyeballing everything here. I generally do that when I'm turning. I, I don't measure all that much. There we go. I'm going to turn off my lathe and twist my tool rest around. So I'm just going to hollow out this center part. I'm just going to start in the center and bring my tool outwards because this is ingrain. I'm not going to try to fight ingrain going inwards. So I'm just going to kind of use my spindle gouge to sort of like a drill at first and then scrape Got it in. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to change it when I get to that part okay. here. So there we go. Yep. There we go. Yep. There we want. 
All right, let me adjust that down just a little bit. So, and I'm gonna just kind of. Oh, everything's being jumpy today. Ah, sorry about that. I just want you guys to have a good look at this. There we go. There you go. That'll hold on. Stop shaking camera. All right. So I'm just, just straight in with the tool. I'm going to slide my tool rest back because it is sitting on the bevel a little bit there. You don't want that to happen. Just straight in at a 45 degree. You can see how it's kind of drilling a hole. And then I'm just going to bring the tool out using the tip of the tool to cut. Got a little bit of nubbin in there, so I'm cutting that out of there. There we go. That's as thin as I want to go with that. Just make sure the inside's nice. Yep. All right. I'm going to move my tool rest a bit, a bit closer. I'm going to give it a slight chamfer. I'm just going to use a scraping cut to do that. Just kind of go back and forth a little bit here. I'm gonna turn my tool rest back, my tool rest back around, so I can grab this. I want it overhead. There we go. Now we're gonna get back to doing this part here. So I need to take a little bit more wood away now because I did hollow it out, so I can work on this a little bit faster. Now I'm working on the on the code that's gonna come and meet right there in the middle. Little tool mark there. Oh All right, my tool's almost at three o'clock. I'm just gonna do it a push cut towards the middle there and then I'm going to swing the handle around kind of create like almost like an OG. Oh. There it goes. Sometimes this walnut's kind of fussy when it comes to making it work right here. Bring that and just kind of meet that in the middle here. And a slight, just a slight little detail right in there. All right. So this is where it's, it's going to come off right here. So I'm just going to create a small groove right now. My tool rest is a little low. Need to raise it up. And I'm going to create like a small chamfer right here. Now the hole in the top is three-eighths of an inch in my lid, so I know how big of a tenon to make here. So I'm going to grab my calipers. I've already get, have it set for three-eighths. I'm going to sand that really quick, get rid of some of those tool marks. I need to lower my lathe. The lathe speed down a little bit there. This is 220. It seemed like I had a pretty good run as far as the tool control went. I need to come under here. Wow, I'm hearing a lot of microphone sounds. <laughs> I don't know if that's me or if somebody else has got their mic open. 
we keep going through looking for uh, someone who will open their mic. And... Sorry, it's me. I'm outside with wind. Oh, okay. Just curious. You can hear it. All right, so I'm going to get a lighter grit. And I had some 400 laying up here. There we go. Just going to smooth out the scratches from the previous sandpaper. Good enough. Grab a paper towel just to dust all the sanding dust off of this. Walnut is notorious for holding on to its sandpaper here. So let me grab my calipers here and I'm just going to see how far I am in the back. So I made the I, I made the, the tenon extra long there because I like to make my measurements in the back and then work my way towards the front. There's nothing worse than having the wrong measurement at this point. Since it's almost like you have to start all over again. So yeah. Hard to put that wood back on. Yeah. So I need to go just a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna stop my lathe before I jam that thing in there and just see how close we are here. All right, so we're almost there. Measuring it this way is going to allow me just to work my way up to the bottom of the piece here. Uh, I thought I had it that time. I'm just going to level it out there. Bet you that's it. Should be. This also lets me play around with it a little bit if I make it a little too small. All right. Well, I got it just right. Write that down on your calendar. And I'm just going to measure all the way up and down just to make sure it's straight. All right. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab me my special small parting tool. I've sharpened on a slant which allows me to make an undercut right here at the foot. That way, when I have a dome on top of the, on top of the, the lid, this will sit nice and firm and flat on that dome. So, so I'm just going to cut on a slant. So when I go in this way, it's cutting the slant. And then it, when I get to the bottom here, it's flat up against the, the, against the tenon. Need to turn on my overhead lights so I can see a little bit better. There we go. Don't mind the shadows. Oh, that's fine. We did inspect it. Not white ones. All right. So now I'm just gonna touch it, kind of make it some blue grooves in here. It helps hold the the piece in the the, the hole a little better. Have the a little bit of teeth for the glue to, to sit in. All right, so now I can just part it off. It also prevents uh, squeeze out. Yeah, it really helps with that. All right, so now we got a, a nice knob, a little indent in the top. It's gonna look nice on that lid. So I need to switch out some tools here. I need to take that piece out, my chuck, put the screw center back in. Members, what you're watching is a demonstration by Scott Hampton, a continue of a piece that we started last week. Uh, he's now creating a lid for it. 
and his demonstration from last week is available on our website, worldwidewoodturners.org. And if you're watching this and you and you are a member of a club or a gang or a crowd or whatever that likes wood turning or working in their shop, invite them to join us. It's absolutely yes. free. It's the world's largest wood turning organization, and we're here to share information. No cost, no sponsorships, no commitments, just wood turning. Okay, Scott, right. go on. So this is bee cream. I've had this jar forever. The only time I use it, I put it on the screws. That way, if the piece is kind of hard to get off, it'll, it's actually easier to get off. But sometimes the, the wood will swell around the threads of a screw center, and it's really hard to get it off sometimes. And this wax, well, basically it's a beeswax cream. It really helps keep it from sticking on there. So I'm going to, I've already marked the rim of the size of this that I, of the lid I need. So I need, I still need to take some of that down. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to mark this with the, right there. And while I've got it set up like this, I have got, where are you? The size of my chuck jaws. I'm going to reverse this. This is going to be the bottom right now. And then I'm going to reverse this into my jaws to create the top. So I'm just using these, these calipers. I'm just going to slowly work my way out until this point say, matches. I hate to say oh. camera change, oh. but camera change. Yeah. Yep, there we go. You guys got to keep reminding me of that. So I'm putting this corner into the wood, but not this corner. Otherwise, you, you know, the, the old saying is going to come back and get you in the neck. So I got it right, right there. It's the size I need for my, my recess, for my jaws. I'm going to mark that with a pencil, too, just so I can see it and you guys can see it much better. So I need to grab me my, my bowl gouge. And I just need to take a bunch of this wood away. There's a couple of ways you can do that. So I'm going to show you both. I'm going to grab me my 5 8 bowl gouge here. So you can start working your way down just by doing a... Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. There we go. Oh. I need to zoom that out a little bit. Let's push it the wrong way. There we go. 45 degrees. And you can just go like, keep going, working your way back and forth doing these kind of cuts. And I steered out of the cut by accident. I brought the tool handle into me. It should have already been in my side and I was adjusting and made the tool handle come out. So you can just keep going until you get to the mark. Or you can bring your tool rest at kind of an angle here. You can do just do some push cuts into that line by turning your tool almost, almost to three o'clock with the flute almost closed. And this is essentially a peeling cut using the side of the bevel right here. Just got to be careful not to take too big of a cut or it will bog down your machine. Or at least it does mine. Even at two horsepower it can do that. And then you just do a smoothing cut back and forth a little bit just to get everything trued and flat. Get it more balanced. Okay, so we're at the diameter I want. There we go. And it's a little round, but we're all that's going to disappear in a minute anyway. So, so now I need to create the recess. So I'm going to grab my parting tool to do that. 
Oh, you know what? I'm going to grab my easy wood tool to do that. That might work better. Square end easy wood tool. It's pretty much the only time I use them is, is for cuts like this. So you can just come in and basically a scraper. deeper here because part of this groove is going to turn into a kind of a decoration in the bottom of the lid. Kind of disguise the fact that it's a it's a recess for that. So I'm going to go in on just a little bit deeper. As you can see I'm just making steps towards the middle. And I'm going to do one more step. This outside rim, that's where the, the recess is going to be. I'm just going to flatten that out. And now I'm going to kind of create a code that goes inward a little bit. That's why I went a little bit deeper than I needed to. So I'm just going to start on the inside here and just kind of Dress that up a little bit. You don't want to go too deep. Well, you can always cut the groove a little bit deeper if you need to. I might do that with this. Just to make sure everything's going to hold. Just a little bit deeper. Not much. Kind of match the depths there. Let me a nice little texturing tool here. Just stick it in the wood. It's a knurling tool. It's going to give it a design in the bottom. And grab me my point tool just to highlight that. Makes it stand out a little bit more. Now I'll grab me my, just a little, my elf tool, just to kind of create a little swirl right there in that center spot there. These are all texturing tools. If you go to my wet, my YouTube channel, Hampton Wood Turnings, I got a whole half hour video on how to use these texturing tools if you guys are interested in seeing anything like that. And if you do go to my website or my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. I've got like 25 different videos on there right now, and it's kind of gaining speed, so I'm hoping it'll keep growing. So, so we got some designs in there, so I'm going to grab me a, my white. Scotch pad and just kind of clean that the fuzzies out of that. Kind of erases all those little nubbins that show up when you add texture. And now I still need to make a slight dovetail in that outer ring. So I'm going to grab me my special tool here. Where are you? It should be here somewhere. Ah, it's not where I can grab it, I guess. All right. Well, I'll just use my little, my parting tool here just to create a small dovetail into this. So my jaws are dovetail. And I'm going to clean up Clean, get rid of that little groove that that just formed. There we go. That's all 
nice and smooth. And I'm just going to grab me some 180 sandpaper and go over it real quick. Somebody's uh, screen sharing. Whoops. Uh, I oops. Get that out of there. Yeah, that's not a. <laughs> kind of blocking my way. There we go. This is just 180. I just want to get rid of some of those tool marks for right now. There we go. Not use it on the texturing. Just so we erase it really quick. And one last 320 just to get rid of the scratches. 180 left behind. And I, I'm sanding at about 600. You don't want to go super fast when you're sanding. Or the sandpaper won't do the work you want it to. All right, now we can reverse this. It's surprising you can just go an eighth of an inch like I did for the recess and it will hold inside that chuck. Once you reverse it. There we go. Uh, screw chuck came loose a little bit, so I'm going to tighten it down so I can get this done. So we're done for it with the screw chuck. We won't need that anymore for today. So I need to bring in the jaws, tighten them down. Cause I created a recess to where when I open the jaws, they just open just a little bit just to grab. So it'll grab all the way around. You don't want it to grab on the points if you open too far. What you're going to end up doing if your recess is too big for the jaws, it's going to only hold right here, 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 and here only on four points. So you want your recess the same size as your jaws. There we go. Make sure it's on the right spot there. Yep. Make sure I was recessing it into the right level there, the outer level. Okay, I'm looking at the horizon right here and it is running through. Is always an added plus. All right, so I need to go to the overhead here. Let's see if I can do a side view overhead. Oh, wrong one. Overhead shoulder. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So, what I want to do is start creating a lid that's going to go kind of a dome shape. It's going to be kind of a it's going to have like a like a chamfer right here so it'll fit down inside that opening on the on the bowl it'll fit down right where in those that walnut opening is and then i'm just going to create a, a nice shaped dome on top first thing i want to do is just clean up the the front of this so i'm just going to do like a, a push cut across the face or I can just do push cuts towards the headstock. That's usually even faster. So that's what I'll do. So I got the, the flute almost closed. I'm just going to... This will true up the face really quick. You don't want to turn it to where that hole disappears. So that's where your, your, that's where your knob is going to go. So... Now I can turn up the way just a little bit faster. And I need to adjust my... That's a little too fast. I'm getting a little bit of vibration there. So I'm just going to do some draw cuts first. Or some pull cuts towards me just to get the shape started. So I'm just going to start here on the corner and work my way around.
and I've got the tool in my side and I'm starting on my left foot and I'm leaning back onto my right as I make the cut. I'm not using my arms going back and forth. So I'm repositioning myself so I can get a little bit closer to that corner here. And I think I need to make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to bring my tool rest back around this way. Take some of this more, take some of this down a little bit more here. Doing some push cuts here. Oop. Sometimes that hole will make it jump. All right, so now we've got the depth I want. So I need to adjust my tool rest a little bit more so I can get around to the side here. go just want to make sure you don't take any of this rim away because that's the size of the of the opening for the the bowl is so it looks a little dumpy a little flat on top so I'm kind of shaping the dome a little bit more to give it a little more uplift grab that knob and yeah, I might have took a lot of that hole out I might have to re-drill it just a little bit I'm not sure no, it's just just some stuff out in there there we go that'll work and I'm just gonna test fit the knob here okay so it's sitting pretty right onto the sitting flat all the way around which is what I was shooting for if it wasn't you can always just adjust this shape a little bit. Just like that, and it'll glue in just like that. I don't use CA glue on any of my pieces. I always use wood glue or epoxy. CA glue will fail on you over time. So I'm going to create a slight chamfer here. It looks like it already created a little bit when I was like adjusting the size here, but. This will help it rest nice and solidly into the bowl. So I've just got this flute almost closed. There we go. And I can still see a little bit of tool mark right there. So I'm just going to drop my handle a little bit and do a shear scrape. Kind of clean up some of those tool marks, make them go away. I'm going to swing my tool, around, tool rest around, and I'm going to, just above the hole here, I'm going to close my flute, and I'm going to zoom out so you guys see that bottom. You can see the angle I'm putting my tool at in that bottom window down there. You see how far I've got that handle dropped. Yeah. I'm just starting to cut right above the hole. You don't want it here because that's a scrape. So you want to just just above center. And the flute's almost closed, and you're just going to gently with your body just lean back with the cut. And you can see those. Oh, lost some of those fine shavings. Come, I was going to show you guys the fine shavings there. See some show back up. And you can, it's just barely taking any off. That's pretty good for almost dry wood. I'm going to grab me a different bow gouge to do that. This, I think that one's getting a little dull, so I'm going to grab me my half inch. There we go. Shavings are better at this cut. I can tell right off the bat the shavings are a little longer. They're not as powdery. So that means I've got my, a sharper tool here. As far as I can go without adjusting my tool rest. 
And then I need to just flatten this out just a little bit. This will mostly be hidden by that the knob there. So it's not real crucial that it's this part's cut perfectly. But this is getting the shape right. Getting rid of tool marks. did leave a little bit of a mark there. That's going a little too fast. You're just going to take your time with this. See, that's better. Don't want to rush through these kind of straight. Yeah, I might grab me a heavier tool. It seems like to be vibrating a little bit. So I'm going to grab me a different sharpened larger bowl gouge here. Yeah, it's not sh Give it a little more support right behind the, the, the tool. And I need to flatten this out just a little bit with a knob. And I need to readjust my tool rest one more time. Get that shape right. Now I'm looking at the horizon just to see there is kind of a kind of a flat spot right in here I need to get rid of. There we go. So I'm gonna grab me some 180 sandpaper. Turn down the lathe. And I'm glancing over at that. That piece, I can't see the cracks from here because it's across my shop, but we'll, we'll go over there and grab that in a minute here. Oh, lost it. Lost the tool. I got a bucket down there. My tools always land in. All right, that's a little too fast of a speed. I could tell. 600 is what I was after. This will get make quick work of getting rid of any imperfections in the wood. Help actually shape it more round, actually, too. So we're going to clean up that chamfer. Try to keep this as crisp as you can where it meets the top of it. I almost sand to that point, but stop shy of it. Grab me some 220 here. Ah, we're doing better on time this time, huh? Everything seems oh, to be yeah. going better. This one's going a little bit. This is going better than last week's. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot smoother. Glad the woods cooperating for you, Scott. Yeah. It was biting me in the butt last night or last time. It's crazy. Yeah, I could tell when I watched the program back. Yeah, I wasn't being uh, very nice to you. <laughs> no, I did get it cleaned up though, especially on the inside. Thankfully. Oh, that's good. I was, I was able to get it nice and, and nicely shaped inside. And got a lot of that tear out off the, the inside off of there. So that's that was the hardest part is doing the inside last week. All right, I'm just going to grab me a, a scotch pad. I'm just going to turn it and just kind of burnish it just a little bit. Just to make the this surface smooth, because I will be painting this surface at a different time. I don't, you guys don't need to see it, me do that twice. But well, some of us do. <laughs> if you guys want me to paint it, I'll be happy to paint it. It's up to you guys. That is that is why we have this on tape. You need to see oh, this. We have it on tape. All right, so I'm gonna go. I'm grabbing my. Oh yeah, there's cracks in it. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see the cracks in the piece. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. See the cracks. Yeah, it's cracked all around there. 
This yeah. came out a lot better yeah. than last week. That's pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to take this mask off. I don't need before. Yeah. It's kind of neat. It gives it a neat effect. It gives it like an old does, fashioned kind of look. Now, does it, uh, will, will the paint flake off where it's cracked? No, no, it's, it stays on there. I haven't okay. seen anything flake off yet. I, I'll spray it. I'll spray it with a, an acrylic spray clear gloss or, or satin or whatever might look good for. Oh, here's a really good okay. spot where it cracked. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll spray I'll spray a finish on it, but then this lid will fit right down inside there. And where's the little knob I made? I just had it. That figures. There's always something. There we are. And now picture this. With this part being blue and the same kind of painting around the, the, the lid there. Oh, I look, and then when that I look awesome. Yeah, and when I add great. Gorgeous. Now, let me add I'm gonna I'm gonna let me add some walnut oil to this so you guys can really see how it, the grain pops with this Clara walnut. You guys will like that I think. Change, change your camera position. Oh, I will. Just a second. I'm, I'm not quite done there yet. So I'm just getting some walnut oil here on a paper towel. I use Doctor's Woodshop Finishing Oil out of Oregon. I also use Mike Mahoney's. It just depends on what I have. So let's get some oil on this. Need to try to get it down inside there. Probably get a paintbrush to get it down into the bottom, maybe. Almost there. I can get my paper towel down in there. There we go. Yep. You can really see this walnut pop with this oil. And it'll darken over time. So you guys can see that. Oh, where am I at? On camera here. There we go. Oh, there it is. You see how that's going to be really pretty. Once it soaks in, I add a couple more coats to that. It'll darken up oh, a little yeah. bit as it dries. Beautiful. And I'll do the same thing with the with the walnut rim that was on the bowl. I'm going to show you guys. See how? The inside looks, that's too much light. The inside looks so much nicer now <laughs> than it was last time. Because I spent a little time on it getting that all nicely smoothed out on the inside and stuff. So there's no real, there's no real tear out in it. You know, there's a little bit, but with this kind of wood, it's hard to get rid of it. I've tried. But no, I've still got some oil on my fingers. So. But if you guys, I don't know if you guys want to watch me paint the, the lid or not. That's up to you guys. Oh, go ahead. If you want to, go ahead and paint it. All right. I'm going to do that. It only takes a minute. Right. But but what time is it? Six o'clock. All right. So let me get this the, the base coat on here. And I'm going to leave it raw on the inside. I'm just going to put oil on it. Yeah, oil is the only finish you're going to put it on the lid? On the inside, yeah. On the outside, I'm going to put, I'm going to paint it just like I did the, the bowl. I need to take sandpaper to that because I got a little bit of oil on it. I'm going to make sure to turn down the speed. So down, lead. There we go. I want to make sure the paint's going to stick, so I really don't want any oil on there. Some of the that came off of my fingers onto the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the base coat on. I'm going to take my blow dryer to it. 
And then I'm going to apply apply that crackle stuff on it. And by the end of the meeting, it should be dry enough so I can put the light on there and it'll start cracking. So we can see that by the end of the meeting. Sweet. But this is just going to be the base coat and that. So I need to move some tools out of the way. Back this out of the way. Take my bow gun and kind of blow all this dust away. Man, I got a mess to clean up later. <laughs> like any other wood turner. Blow off any dust that's in the chuck or on the piece. Just to make sure there's no dust kind of laying around. Ah, uh, there goes my... That'll turn off in a second. No, it's not that loud. Oh, okay. So let me grab my board here. Protect my legs bed. All right, so instead of using a brush to put the base coat on, I'm using a, a sponge brush. Just one of these sponge brushes like this. It seems to go on a little smoother than, and it doesn't leave as brush strokes as much as like a brush would. So, so I'm just getting most of the water out of it. I just cleaned it. So let me grab me a, that bottle of same color. Make sure I put the same color on the lid as I <laughs> put on the on the bowl. Put a little bit of the dollop on there and just kind of gently go across the surface. And I'll work on the rim too, don't forget that part. Yeah, I, I hit this with the blow dryer, it dries pretty quick. I don't want to do that with the crackle though because I don't know how to behave. With a crackle medium. So I'm not wearing my latex right now because my hands are pretty far away from this part, but I'll put them back on when I use to apply the white with the sponges. Oh, don't worry, you'll find a way to get it on you. <laughs> well, this is all water based, so it pretty much washes off anyway pretty quick. If you're not wearing the paint, you ain't painting. Yeah, so I'm going to do a, let's see, I'm trying to find a better view here. There we go. You can see that instead of the overhead stuff. It, it's, I like using acrylic paints. It's, it's nice and creamy and it goes on pretty nice. It dries pretty fast. You can get it consistent. Yeah, you can get a consistent level out of it. So it's already drying. So I'm just kind of, I'm not going to add any more paint. I'm just kind of smoothing everything out. Give it like a, a consistent thickness of the paint all the way around. And once it's dry too, I take a scotch pad to it while it's spinning on the lathe and it helps smooth it out. Yeah, that's that's an, another excellent excellent point is that is that you can sand it and and you'll get a very clean smooth finish consistent yeah. finish on it. Yeah. yeah, just use a really really high grit, you know, like four hundred or higher. Sometimes I'll do that with uh, uh, I might mean, do this with milk paint and gesso too. A gesso is just thick acrylic paint. Yeah, you sand it sand it and then put a second coat on it and then you've got. I mean, if you're looking for a really smooth finish. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. That really, I like using gesso. Yep. All right, so blow dryer time here. Once this actually heats up the wood, it really makes it dry fast.
and it's probably already dry to the touch. I want to make sure I don't leave any crumbs of wood behind there. So I'm just going to touch it with a paper towel just to see so I'm not leaving fingerprints behind. Yep, so it's already dry. So I'm going to grab me that crackle medium and I do use a brush to put this on. So let me grab me my clean brush and get all the water out of it. And you gotta give it a good shake because the stuff that makes it crack settles to the bottom. Now I only apply this where I'm gonna apply the white paint really, so I'm not wasting too much of it. And it won't make the bottom coat crack. You can put it on top and it won't crack the base coat. Only whatever you put on top of it. So it's a nice creamy type of color and it goes on clear. As you'll see here. So you can't I can see how shiny it is just looking at it here, so and it dulls off a little bit when it when it's dry. I'm glad it's kind of shiny though, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see where you're painting it. So that stuff's kind of self leveling, not and oh yeah yeah oh yeah the brush strokes pretty much Im almost immediately disappear once you apply it right on nice so we'll let this dry until about what do you say 645 and i'll put some white on there and sure set this you just let this sit here and we can do some more show and tell whatever you got in mind all right uh is are we ready to jump back to scott and see if he's got that piece ready to talk to us about well i don't see why not sir let me scroll through here and quarter, find it. quarter to the top of the hour and we normally pull the plug in about 17 minutes so uh but scott are you with us there he is let me put my mic on hold on one second what <laughs> <laughs> now we got you. There you are. Oh. All right. I think you guys can hear me now, right? Yes, yeah. sir. sir. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to dab some paint on here like we did the other one. We're going to use the sponge again and make this puppy crackle, I hope. My shop is so warm that I'm sure this stuff is settled up. So I need to get my sponge a little more wet here again. Squeeze some of that moisture out. All right. The camera, Scott. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, let's do a side view. There we go. All right. So I'm dabbing just a little bit on paper towel. And I'm just going to ask, you know, little too thick so I'm just come back here and pick some of that up and work it the way around there so this stuff it kind of shines it's it dries kind of glossy but that's good because it'll it tells you where where it's at on the piece that you need to cover it up and that'll tell you where it'll crack I was trying to download the, the picture that was my inspiration. I sent a picture to Dane of it by email, but I haven't been able to get it to come up on my computer. I can probably do a screen share of it. That way you guys have an idea where I got the idea for this, this bowl. So if I get that on there, and we're just going to let this it's already starting to crack i can see it i'm just filling in spots now yeah yeah it starts to crack pretty quick yeah it didn't take long this is going to be very pretty now i'm going to put 
you know, coats of either gloss lacquer or acrylic on it and polish it up. And it's going to look like ceramic when I get done. And that's where I got my inspiration from. It's a ceramic piece. That's a piece of, eh, come on, it's a piece of sponge getting stuck on there. There it goes. So let me pull that up on my computer real quick. I can screen share my inspiration for this. And you guys are going to get a really good idea of what I'm, I'm going after here. So let me pull that picture up. Where are you? Scott, Scott this is an expansion of Scott's demo from last week where he turned the bowl and did uh, finish so much of it. And then today showed us a change in the product and a way to do it. And now you're seeing the completion of the lid. And we have a in this too. These are all demo. So, uh, so if one of you guys want to make me a co-host, I can screen share that picture real quick. Well, you, you, can, do the co you can do the screen share without a co-host. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is right there. Hey, oh, no, that's not the picture I was looking for. Where am, what am I looking for here? I'm getting Microsoft Office and all this weird stuff on my phone here. I don't know why I've never had that before. Huh. Haters. Hold on one second. I'm trying to hey, just what? screen share my picture. Okay, we don't have it's a not... screen share at all. From... Yeah, that's, well, that's because I'm not... There seeing the come. picture now. let's see if i can bring there it is oh it's not coming up on my screen though oh there it is it's, are you guys seeing that no i'm seeing the one you uh, originally did a few minutes ago uh, we still see your tailstock camera and, hey scott uh, is that picture scott is that picture online anywhere no I it, it, I I just go back into it and it'll bring it up on the screen uh let's see here Oh, there it is. All right. I got it now. It popped up. It should be showing. There it is. There. There it is. Yep, now we there. see it. Can you see yep. the pot? Yeah. Yes. I had a hard time following this thing, but not anymore. Wow. Yeah, that's a pretty, pretty cool look. So that's what I was, that, that's what I'm going for. Pottery looking. Yeah. yeah nice. Looks like pottery. Yeah. Yeah. By the time I get a finish on it, that's what this will look like. So cool. We uh, we as wood turners can take some very interesting inspiration from uh from the pottery bunch. Uh oh yeah. Especially, uh, there's a lot of very interesting things being done in finishes with Raku firings and that kind of stuff that we can try to to mimic. Okay, it's starting to crack, but it's not showing up on the camera too well. But it, it's there. It's just got a big glare on it right now. Let me see if I can switch over to the overhead. You guys, can... no, no, no. It's okay. We trust you that it's there. Let's see if I can zoom in. I'm just trying to get the light right. Yeah, you guys can start seeing it there. A little bit yeah, yeah, yeah. see it right right in there it's, a, it's the <laughs> angle of my lighting in here this it's throwing it off so because it's so bright it's so white that it's so you take that and you you put that with this bowl and it's gonna look pretty cool yes, all right so the and I'll have it all finished, and I'll show it off to next week during the show and tell. How's that? Great. That works good, Scott. Scott. All right. hey, Scott, I'm kind of happy the way it's coming out. Tonight. Sure, no problem. Hey, Scott. You're quite welcome. All right. Thank you. Everybody give it up to Scott. Yes, he's a very yeah. good demonstration. Yeah. Great yeah, job, Scott. You. Oh, you're yeah, welcome. 